Renault Group is presenting its strategy and outlook to investors and analysts at its Capital Markets Day. Luca De Meo, welcome. Thank you. You are the CEO of Renault Group. Uh, today you are announcing a revolution for Renault Group. What is it exactly? We have always been working on, you know, on a relatively well-known value chain. So you, where you had four or five years of development, then seven, eight years of distribution and manufacturing distribution. And now the whole thing is exploding. So you have, you know, EV coming in, you have software, you have mobility platforms and new services, you have circular economy, et cetera, et cetera. So it's like, you know, moving from doing one discipline, like playing soccer for a hundred years, and then now you have to do five different, completely different sports. So you can choose to do that with one athlete doing the five sports. It's, it's going to probably be, have a mediocre performance on all five of them, but you win the medal. Or you decide to win five medals, and then you get five athletes you know, with different skills, different talent, different training, different diet, whose performance is measured also in a different way, to play each one of them. And that's what we are doing. So we are specializing, focusing a group of people on business oriented to the future with high growth and high profitability. So we do Ampere, so we create Ampere, is the first uh, full-fledged EV and software company coming out from the disruption of a incumbent, let's say, OEM. We do Alpine, uh, it's the first time that Renault Group tried to grab a little bit some territory, you know, into the high end of the market for people that are ready to spend money for cars. Uh, that uh, we all know it's a more profitable segment using the, I would say, taking the opportunity of this discontinuity on technology. So by using the electric platform, we're going to try to do high-end uh, EVs and making the global relevant, say, high-end EV uh, player. We have announced a few months ago Mobilize. Mobilize is built around the bank, which is very solid, but it, has a, it covers a whole array of uh, new mobility demands from financial products like leasing, subscription, insurance, etc., etc., down to more concrete things like charging services, charging infrastructure, second life repurposing of batteries, etc., mobility platform. And one of the things that makes Mobilize completely different is that we plugged into the system a team of engineers and designers. So it's actually an, OE, an automotive brand. It's actually an automotive company, but it comes fr from the service to the product and not the other way around. And we believe that uh, it's a very interesting thing also to generate a recurrent, let's say, revenues on, on the product throughout the life cycle. Then the other sport is circular economy. We, a couple of weeks ago, we announced the creation of the Future in Neutral. And the Future in Neutral is uh, the, let's say, first full-fledged uh, circular economy company dedicated to this business emerging into the automotive industry. And it's an open platform, open you know, to all industry, to suppliers, to other companies that want to do it. It's also very interesting, growing and profitable uh, and profitable thing. Of course, all the other, you know, the classical activities of Renault, that means, you know, all the products, the brands like uh, the Renault, Dacia, LCV will continue to flourish. And actually, I think, as I mentioned before, it will probably be an upside because the new products are coming. So we are designing a completely new organization, is a new module of playing. And words like focus, like accountability, like transparency and effectiveness, rather than only efficiency, are the key words of this new philosophy. You, you are mentioning some huge challenges. Can Renault Group do that all by itself? But honestly, I think that nobody can do all the things that we are expected to do as an OEM alone. Okay? And I take this assumption, I take the assumption that instead of trying to do, you know, everything by ourselves, like many pretend they will be doing, that I go horizontal. Okay, so that I, it means that all the challenges we're facing are cutting industry horizontally. So you got to find, go, go around and find the best players, the specialists in some of the fields and partner with them to actually co-invest, co-create and share the business if, if, uh, if necessary and scale and co-scale, kind of scale the business with them. That's, w that's uh, one of the principles of this revolution phase is that we're gonna do the things together. And I have two or three examples. Horse, that means uh, you know, the idea of uh, carving out our mechanical engineering operation, 
putting them together with uh, Geely, okay, which is not a great group. Assets uh, in terms of R&D, manufacturing, uh, you know, technology. Will, when you do this, you actually double the scale immediately, okay, day one. And uh, you, have a, you have a player that is like 15 billion revenues, so it's comparable to one of the biggest uh, tier ones, and is there to supply engines to anybody who wants our technology. Uh, I think it's, it's a good example. Uh, it's, in a way, it's classical, but still it's a kind of unique uh, uh, you know, example in the industry right now. Second, uh, let's say, I think I would have mentioned, of course, is uh, we are developing a centralized electronic architecture plus a car OS that you, we want to be open. And we want potentially this thing to be, I would say, become a standard in case you know, other, other OEM will want that. So we are partnering with two giants. It's, one is Qualcomm and the other, uh, of course, for the semiconductors. And uh, Google for, for the car OS based on Android. So there's, there's nothing best on the planet to do this. And we will do something together. This brings speed. This brings a reduction of cost in, for us in developing such kind of technology. And when you partner with this kind of guys, they know what they're talking about. So I think it's, it's going to also secure that the execution will be very, very good. Last example, light commercial vehicle. We are trying to revolutionize the, uh, the, the segment. We do a new skate electric platform on a completely revolutionary concept focused on reducing the total cost of usage for mobility operators by 30%. And also there we will do that together with another OEM, which I cannot announce today. But um, for example, the, what we call the Flexivan, this is the code name of the, of the concept, uh, will be the first vehicle to embed centralized electronic architecture and the new car OS that we developed to, with, Google, with Google on, uh, on, on Android because we believe that specifically in that segment, it makes a lot of you know, rational sense to include services, et cetera, and we create, can create value for the consumer. So just to tell you, we do it like this because we feel it's the best way uh, of getting, you know, getting know-how, getting resources because some of these people are investing. And so it makes a lot of sense in, in this new world where we are discovering new things and where we are you know, expected to do a lot of things at the same time. To conclude, what is your outlook and financial guidance for Renault Group going forward? So we have announced that we will be, um, let's say, at eight, above 8% in 2025 and above 10% uh, in operating margin by 2030. So it's an uplift compared to the uh, objective we gave ourselves uh, beginning of 2021 because we basically reached them. What is also very reassuring, I, I, I think, is, uh, is the fact that we are also announcing targets uh, uh, for the free cash flow, uh, because we're saying that from now to 2025 will be above the threshold of 2 billion cash generation every year, uh, you know, in the next uh, two, two years. And then from 2026 onwards, we are committing to the fact that it will be above 3 billion euro of uh, free cash flow generation. And looking at the history of Renault, this, this probably was one of the weaknesses of our business model. But as we are remixing the whole thing towards you know, businesses that are structurally generating more cash, more, more margin and, and growth, I think we are, you know, that's the outcome of all this thinking on how to reinvent the thing. Roche will be very high, uh, so above 30%, as I mentioned before. Luca De Meo, thank you very much. Welcome. Welcome.